Jacqueline E. Ehe from BS Ed Social Studies, your reporter for today. Today, I will discuss learning to live together in Unit 1 UNESCO's Four Pillars of Education. At the end of this discussion, you should be able to explain what is meant by learning to live together. Determine the third UNESCO's Pillars of Education. Devise a form of education by promoting learning to live together. Before we jump onto our discussion, first I will read this quote by Sathya Sai Baba. Let us live and move in harmony. Let us grow together. Let us live in complete harmony without any misunderstanding. Of the four pillars of education, Learning to live together is the one most vital to building a genuine and lasting culture of peace in both the Asia-Pacific region and throughout the world. The three other pillars, learning to know, learning to do, and learning to be, are the basis for learning to live together, which will be discussed by my co-groupmates. The Commission has put greater emphasis on the one that it proposes and describes as the foundation of education, which is learning to live together. This can be achieved by developing an understanding of others and their history, traditions, and spiritual values. On this basis, we can create a new spirit guided by recognition of our growing interdependence and a common analysis of the risks and challenges of the future. This may induce people to implement common projects and manage the inevitable conflicts intelligently and peacefully. Learning to live together in peace and harmony is a dynamic, holistic, and lifelong process through which mutual respect, understanding, caring, and sharing, compassion, social responsibility, solidarity, acceptance, and tolerance of diversity among individuals and groups, which are ethnic, social, cultural, religious, national and regional are internalized and practiced together to solve problems and to work towards a just and free peaceful and democratic society a range of skills is necessary for learning to live together including skills for self-control handling emotions communication interpretation of behaviors critical thinking relationship, building, and cooperation, problem-solving, and decision-making. Many or all of these are referred to us as life skills, being seen as essential to meaningful personal development and social relationship in today's world. This process begins with the development of inner peace in the minds and hearts of individuals engaged in the search for truth, knowledge, and understanding of each other's cultures and the appreciation of shared common values to achieve a better future. Education should adapt to complementary approaches from early childhood. It should focus on the discovery of other people in the first stage of education and in the second stage of education and in lifelong education, it should encourage involvement in common projects. In the discovery of other people, here are some examples. First, teach pupils and students about human diversity. 
instill in them an awareness of the similarities and interdependence of all people. Children should be taught to understand other people's reactions by looking at things from their point of view. Teaching the history of religions or customs can provide a useful reference tool for molding future behavior. Recognition of the rights of the other people should not be jeopardized by the way the children and young people are thought. While in encourage involvement in common projects, here are some examples. Introduce young people to collaborative projects from an early age. The renovation of a slum areas. Help for disadvantaged people. Humanitarian action. Senior citizen help schemes. Involvement of teachers and students in common projects can help to teach a method for resolving conflicts and provide a valuable source of reference for students in later life. You can see here in the Learning to Live Together, the Asia-Pacific Perspective Schematic Diagram of Core and Related Values Needed to Live. Learning to Live Together is one of the major issues in education today since the contemporary world is too often a world of violence. Therefore, we believe it is necessary to, to devise a form of education which will make it possible to avoid conflicts or resolve them peacefully by promoting learning to live together with others. By developing a spirit of respect for the values of pluralism and the need for mutual understanding and peace, Learning to live together involves developing, broadening, or changing perceptions of an attitude towards ourselves and others and consequently. The way we behave in our daily encounters and interactions with others. Multiple influences impact the formation of attitudes and behaviors. What is taught in school is often counter to what is learned at home, in the community, and through diverse media. It involves the teaching of a wide range of knowledge, skills, attitudes, and behaviors to enable us to interact with others in, in a just, equitable, and empathic manner. The concept entails the capacity to develop one's potential while learning to successfully manage relationships with others. It involves the development of self-awareness and self-esteem, as well as empathy and respect for others, and requires the capacity for active citizenship, development of both local and global identity and an ability to understand others and appreciate diversity. The third pillar of education implies that the teacher should help the students to develop an understanding of other people and appreciation of interdependence since we live in a closely connected world. The teacher should help students to realize the value of being able to live together in their gradually enlarging world. Like for example, home, school, community, town, province, country, and the world as a global village. And for the summarization, learning to live appropriately with others is important in our daily lives. From life in school, family, and community to the special problems of adolescent relationships. Learning to live together in a wider society requires awareness of and respect for human rights and the responsibilities of local, national, and global citizenship. Learning to live together as responsible citizens can help reduce tensions due to ethnic or other divisions and social disparities which contribute to the instability of civil conflict seen in many nations today. That's all about for my report. 
Thank you and have a great day.